Good morning, evening, night, people of planet Earth. My name is Gridinger, and today I bring you a very special tutorial. How to turn a 3D model into a Minecraft Java Edition build from versions 1.14 and up. I tried doing this for older versions, but I'm having some trouble, so if you want to learn this on older versions, let me know down in the comments and I'll try to figure it out. For this project, I will be making a floating wizard tower, but you can use any 3D object you want. Before we start the tutorial, I just want to point out why this guide might be useful for you. That you can use the timestamps of this video to skip this part. I found four main reasons. Number one, organic builds. Making something look organic is challenging enough and doing it in Minecraft is even harder. But if you create or download a 3D model that looks good enough, for example this dragon I made, you'll be able to get a great result in Minecraft very easily. The only thing I ask for is that if you plan to use someone else's 3D models, please address it and credit them. Number 2. Scale One of the things I struggle with the most while building is giving my builds the right scale. It's sometimes too small, sometimes too big, but with this method you'll be able to try different scales in no time. Number 3. Rotation. It's not very common, but sometimes you might want to make a diagonal build. I've tried it myself and getting a rectangular shape can be a bit challenging. Number 4. Easy modification. At first I wasn't planning on including this one when I wrote the script, but when I started actually filming stuff for this video I realized that you won't get a perfect model the first time you try. And you probably want to modify the 3D model, not just the Minecraft model, to make it easier. For example, with my build I had to change a couple of times the bottom of my island because I wasn't very pleased with how it looked, and doing it in Blender was pretty, pretty easy. And now that I've addressed these four things, let's begin with the tutorial. First of all, we need to get a 3D model. I'm gonna make my own using Blender, a free source 3D software which I love. If you want to learn Blender, I suggest following this beginner course by Andrew Price, the Blender guru, because I started Blender with the previous version of this tutorial and I can say firsthand that it's pretty cool, you learn even more than you'll need to use it for Minecraft. You can also use any other 3D software that allows you to export either a STL or an OBJ file. Or you can look for a 3D model of these formats on the web and if you do, again, please remember to credit the artist. As you can see, the model doesn't need to be detailed at all, because if you want to maintain all this detail in Minecraft, you'll need to make a higher resolution build, and that in some cases might exceed the vertical build limit. Once we are happy with how our model looks, we need to make sure that it does not contain any endgames, that is, individual faces with more than 4 vertices. To make sure that doesn't happen, in Blender you can use the triangulate modifier and apply it. Now we need to work on the orientation of the model and for that I need to explain how Minecraft schematics work. When you create a schematic, you're creating a bounding box around a set of blocks. This box will always be parallel to Minecraft's block distribution, which means that if we rotate our model, the bounding box will more than likely change its dimensions. To select the angle of our model, we'll hop into Minecraft for a second, you're going to face to the direction in which you want to see the front of your build Press F3 on your keyboard and on this panel on the left you'll take a look at this first angle. You'll take that number and subtract it from 180. I get 180 minus minus 90 which is 270. I'll take that angle into my software and rotate my model using this angle on the vertical axis. For Blender this will be RC270. This should work for any angle, but try to approximate it to the nearest multiple of 10. And for builds parallel to the Minecraft world, multiples of 90. Once we have our angle set, we can export our 3D model. For Blender, we hit File, Export and wait for an OBJ. We save our file where we can find it later and we move on to make the schematic. To do this, we'll use an online voxelizer which was suggested by Reddit user Cypher12. And I'm sorry for mispronouncing it in case you're watching. You'll find a link to this in the description. Once inside the website, you'll hit open file and locate the OBJ model we just exported. You'll click on skip texture and now we'll set the size of our bounding box. The first thing we'll do is take the small slider on the far right, which is currently set to 1, and we'll lower it a bit. Around 0.9 works well for me. This will allow us to see where individual blocks are located. 
Now, this big slider will allow us to change the size of our bounding box. You can also use these arrows to make individual steps. Keep an eye on this middle value since you can exceed Minecraft's build limit, which is 256 blocks from bedrock level in the current version. But from 1.17 and beyond it will be bigger. This final slider will determine the thickness of our schematic. It's currently generating an empty shell which is one block thick, but we can increase this number to make it a solid build. This will only affect closed surfaces as you can see, and it doesn't matter if you exceed the number of blocks your model can contain. If you plan to design an interior for your build in Minecraft, I suggest leaving this at one or any other low number depending on the scale of your build. Once we have a schematic we're happy with, we can export it. Now we'll go further down on the website and enable the dot schematic extension. Sadly, we can only export a model made out of a single material without getting into creating 3D model textures and unwrapping and crazy 3D stuff, and even then it's hard assigning specific blocks. But don't worry, I'll also show you a fast way of changing the materials on Minecraft. You'll go back up and hit save schematic. Again, you can save this wherever you want, but we'll move it to a specific folder on the next step. To import the schematic, I'll be using World Edit, a free mod for Minecraft which you can install on Fabric or Forge. I'll be using Fabric. To download Fabric, you'll go to another link in the description and click on Download Installer Universal slash Jar. To install it, be sure to have the game closed. You'll open the installer, select the Minecraft version you're using and the rest you can leave as default. Then hit install and this window should immediately appear. To get world edited, you'll once again go to the link in the description which will take you to this site. You'll scroll down to recent files and pick the option that's named Fabric for MC which contains the Minecraft version you're using. You'll hit this orange download button and after 5 seconds you can save this file inside your Minecraft mods folder. To access it you'll type on your address bar percentage update a percentage, hit enter, go to the .minecraft folder and mods. If you don't have this folder you can create one, just make sure to name it mods all in lowercase. You'll save the world edit jar file here and then we'll open up the Minecraft launcher. On your installation tab, you look for the fabric version you installed and open it. Access the world where you want to import your build and type double slash want in the chat. If you receive a wooden axe, that means you did everything correctly. Now we'll go back to our Windows Explorer to move the schematic to a new directory which was just created when we opened the world. We'll enter the updata directory once again and go to .minecraft, config, world edit and schematics. This is where you'll place all your future schematics and be sure to remember the name of the file. The importing process isn't very intuitive. When you import your schematic, the block you're standing on will be the block from your bounding box which is located the farthest on the northwest direction and also the farthest down. For this reason, positioning your model in a specific spot might require some trial and error. I'll import my model inside a super flat world with some dirt layers since I also want to improve this crater. You'll stand on your desired spot and type in the chat double slash schematic load and your file name. In my case this will be W tower. Now you'll type double slash paste and your schematic will be imported. If you don't like where it appeared you can type double slash undo and try pasting it again until it is in a place where you want it. There might be other tools that could make this process a bit easier, but the ones I tried were either outdated, in development or not very intuitive, which will make this video even longer. The schematic also contains the air blocks from your bounding box, and if you don't want to import them you can use double slash paste space dash a to import everything except the air blocks. To make my model look good I'll use some world edit tools and other things I'll just add manually. The first tool I'll use is the replace command. This will allow us to replace all the blocks of a certain type inside a bounding box with a different block type. To create the bounding box, I will select the two opposite vertices of my box using the wand. For point 1 I'll use the left click and for point 2 the right click. Then I'll use the command replace, input the block that's on my model and then the block I want it to become. For blocks with a different distribution or to add some texture, I will create a brush and a mask. To create a brush, you need to hold on your main hand any item that is in a block. I like using special arrows since they kind of look like a brush. 
then I'll use the command double slash brush sphere then the block I want to apply and finally the radius of my sphere. This radius can go from 1 to 6 but there's a way to change it so if someone wants to know please let me know down in the comments. Depending on the size of your build you might want to go a bit higher or a bit lower but I'll be using 3. This brush creates a sphere of diameter 7 of the block I selected but using a mask will allow me to only rewrite specific blocks. For the mask I'm gonna be creating a global mask. This means that most of the tools I'll be using will be affected by it. For adding texture to your build, you can set the material of the brush either when you create it or when you modify it with the slash material command. For example, 30% of one material, comma, 70% of another material. And I don't remember the ones I used on the video, that's why I'm calling them materials. With this tool and by doing some manual adjustments, you'll be able to finish your new build in no time. As you can see, this was the result of my build. I really hope you like it, I'm not a builder, I could always use some feedback. If you want to tell me in the comments what you think about my tower, please let me know. But thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate you watching the video all the way through. Feel free to leave any doubts you may have down in the comments and also please consider liking this video in case you think someone else might find it useful and maybe consider subscribing as well. Some of the topics of this video I've gone very lightly about because there are great tutorials already that I've found that can teach you a lot more of this stuff but if you want me to make a specific tutorial please let me know that as well in the comments. I'll probably read every single one of them. But for now, my name is Weirdinger and I hope to see you again in the future. Bye! Then hit install and this message should immediately appear. Then hit install and this message... message... Then hit install and this message... message... Joder, que difícil! Then hit install and this message... message... Complicada palabra, joder! Ah. Then hit install and this window should immediately appear.